friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's very special Let's Go Nuts and Fairy Friends. So I've stamped the images I'll be using on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. And as you saw, I do have an extra panel with a few more images that didn't fit on this sheet, and I'll just be coloring those off screen since they're all featured here on the main panel. So I'm starting with this little fairy house, and I'm going to turn it into a strawberry house. So I'm coloring it with my red combo, which is R22, R24, and R29. I put the R29 down at the bottom, creating a little shadow and up under the petals, which I'm going to turn into leaves, and then a little bit around the door frame. And then I'm blending that out with the R24 and finishing with the R22, just making sure to color over the edge of that R24 so that I get a nice blend into that softest part of the strawberry. Then I'm going to continue with this combo for all of my strawberries. So I'm going to put the R29 down at the bottom of each one, but I'm not going to be like consistent. On some it's a little bit more, on some it goes up the left or up the right, just to give a little bit of variation between the different berries. And then once again, I'm going to blend up with the R24 as the mid-tone. Again, just kind of varying how much of that I add. And then I'm going to save some room at the top for that lightest shade, the R22. So I'm going to fill in all of these berries, plus color the ones on the separate panel. And then I will do a second layer on all of the berries as well, just to smooth out that blend and increase the saturation. I did that off screen to save some time as well but uh, you guys have seen me do this on my channel lots of times before. It just really helps with everything being nice and smooth. For the jam, I wanted it to be just a shade darker because usually when you cook down fruit, it does get a little bit deeper in color. So I took away the R22 and added in the R39 as my darkest. I'm putting that R39 down at the bottom blending up about another third with the R29, and then filling in the top third with the R24, and I'll do the same with the jam jars on the separate panel. Then I'm gonna move on to my mice, and I'm starting with E50 and E51. I wanted to keep them fairly light on today's card, but it ended up not being uh, enough contrast for me. I do prefer a lot of contrast in my coloring, so it's hard for me to color really soft. Uh, I have to kind of force myself to go easy on it, but I did need to add in that third shade for it to be to my liking. So I pulled in the E53 and then just reblended that out with the E51 and then the E50. And I did leave a little white space on their muzzles just to have a little bit of extra character there. So I'm going to color the other two mice the same. This time I'm going to go ahead and start with that E53 since I want to have that in there and I'm going to just blend out with that E51 and then add a little E50 mainly on the face for the two mice that are holding berries because their bellies would be cast in a little more shadow. There wouldn't be as much highlight in that area since the sun can't reach it. I love how many different coloring options there are for these adorable mice, but I do think that this combo in particular is quite sweet. So I'm going to move on to the little sign, and that is going to have my sentiment for this card. So I want to make sure that you're really able to see that. So I'm going to bring in the E55. I did darken up that combo by taking away the E50 and adding in that E55. And I'm going to blend toward the center, making sure that the lightest part is right in the middle where that sentiment is so it's very legible. And I did do a second layer on that just to smooth things out. Then I'm pulling in R11 and R20 to color in the noses and ears of my mice. 
the noses I'm doing with the R20 and then also adding a little R20 at the bottom of their ears, blending up with the R11. And then I'll use both of those shades to add some rosy cheeks, just doing the R20 first and then tracing around the edge with the R11. For my greens, I went with G21, G24, and G28. And I'm going to start with that G28 for my darkest and add a little bit of that to all of my little strawberry caps. And then I'm going to blend that out with the G24 as the midtone and save some room for that G21 so I have a little bit of highlight. I put all the highlights on the left and the shadows on the right for those strawberry caps. And I'll switch back to my G28 to do the caps on the strawberry vines. So I'm going to do the cap with the G28 and then start up the vine that is closest to the strawberry with that darkest shade. And then I also want to color in some of the leaves. So I'm kind of skipping around and doing um, every other one or sometimes I skip to just so I have a little bit of a variation in those leaves so everything isn't exactly the same color. So I use that G28 and added all of that in at once since these are pretty small and quick to color. And then I brought in that G24 and began to blend that out and also blending up on the little curve of the vine that is above each strawberry. And so I'm just filling in about another third of that space on each of those leaves. And then I'm going to use that G21 once again for the highlight shade and fill in all the rest of the white space on those leaves. And again, I will color the vine that is off screen as well with this combo. I think these leaves would also look really pretty with some brighter, fresher greens, but I previously did a card using some brighter greens, so I wanted to have a different color palette for this card, even though it's still kind of red and green because it's strawberries, but on that one I was more pinks and fresher greens, so this time I wanted to go a little bit darker and a little bit more desaturated in color for these greens. Like I said, I'm going to turn the top flower of the little fairy house into a strawberry cap. So I'm coloring those petals to be leaves. So I use that G28 once again for the darkest and just tried to separate the leaves from each other by creating a bit of shadow. And then I'm blending out with the G24, making sure to really go over the edge of the G28 with that shade as well, since they are so big. And then I'm going to bring in the G21, but I'm still going to leave some space. Since they are so big, I wanted to bring in a fourth shade. So I'm going to use the G20, which is going to really lighten up the edge and give it a lot of dimension. Then I wanted to do the door to match. So I'm going to start with that G28 and add some shadow down the left hand side and then a little bit at the bottom of the door. And then I'll blend that out with all four of these shades. So just kind of creating almost like a C shape going around that doorknob. And then finally bringing in that G20. Did add a quick second layer of that G20 on the top leaves as well. And then for the rest of the leaves of the strawberry patch, I'm just going to leave off the G28. So the G24 becomes my darkest shade on those. Then I'm blending out with the G21 as the mid-tone and I'll fill in with the G20 for the highlight. So they're still going to match and look like they come from the same plant, but they will just be a subtle difference to give them a little bit of variation. Next I wanted to bring in some aqua tones. I chose BG10, BG11, and BG13. And I'm going to do the wagon in these shades. I put the BG13 on the outside edges and then a little bit under the lip and then blend it out with the BG11. And then I'm going to finish with the BG10 
I'm also going to use those shades for the tops of my jam jars, just adding a little bit of like a fabric covering on those. So I use the BG13 in the same way on the sides and then up under the lip and then blend it out with the other two shades and use the BG10 for the jam label, the window on the strawberry house and also the whites of the flowers. Then I wanted to bring in some yellow and I went with Y02, Y06, and Y08 and I decided to give this little mouse some yellow overalls. I've done them in jean before and I just thought it would be fun to give him colored ones and also to tie in the centers of the flowers in one other place on the card. For the centers of the flowers I just used those lightest two shades and the Y08 for the doorknob. My last combo is T3 and T5. I'm going to do the handle of the wagon and the centers of the tires and also the stone hearth in front of the strawberry house. Then I'll take a black memento marker and add some seeds to my strawberry house just to help them look like the other strawberries and really give this idea that it is a strawberry house and not a flower. So I'm just doing uh, little dots here and there and kind of pulling the point downward to mimic those uh, seeds on the strawberry. Then I'm going to grab a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and go over the eye of the mouse that has his eye open. Just starting that off to the side first to get it flowing nicely. And then I'll take a clear glaze pen and I'm going to go over the jam jars so that they look nice and shiny. So I'm just carefully going around that and filling in all of that space around the label. And I will also use it on the window of the little house and the doorknob as well. And then I'll trim all of these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm going to take the cloudy stencil and I'm going to use some salvage patina distress oxide ink to create a sky. So I'm just starting on that stencil and kind of pressing down as I first lift off and then getting lighter with my pressure as I go up so I get a nice hazy look. And then I'll just turn my stencil and you can even flip it over to get a different cloud formation. And because my scene is going to be mostly on grass, I only need a little bit of sky at the very top. I did rub a little extra ink un underneath that cloud, that last one, just to make sure it wasn't so stark white. And then I'm going to press some of that ink onto an acrylic block, water it down, and do some splatter detail just to give it a little more interest and movement in the scene. Then I'm going to set this panel aside to dry and take out another piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. And this time I'm going to start with some mowed lawn. I'm going to cover this entire panel because I don't know which side I want to cut my grass from yet. And I'm going to be using most of it. So I'm starting with the mowed lawn at the top. I'm going down about one third of the way. And then I'm going to bring in Rustic Wilderness for my mid-tone, making sure that I blend that up into that mode lawn a little bit so I'll get a nice transition from shade to shade. And I will go back over that with my mode lawn ink blending tool to kind of smooth that blend out. And then I'm going to bring in my darkest shade, which is going to be Pine Needles and I'm going to add that one down at the bottom third and I just used my little panel that I cut my images out of to keep my fingers out of the ink so that I don't end up leaving fingerprints behind on that panel and then I'll go back over the transition with the rustic wilderness for that then I'm going to do some splatter on this panel as well with all three shades I like to start with the lightest one first. That way I don't have to clean off my brush in between. So I press some mowed lawn onto that block, watered it down, and then I'll tap it against the block so I get a nice fine splatter. I prefer that look as opposed to the larger droplets that you might get if you just 
flick the paintbrush um, without tapping it against something. Then I use the mode lawn and then I will wipe off that block real quick so that I can use that darkest shade, the pine needles, and add a bit of that as well. Just making sure that I cover all three sections so it really kind of integrates everything all together. And then I'll set this panel aside to dry as well. Once it did dry, I die cut both panels with the outside in stitch rectangle stackables to give me that nice stitching detail on the outside edges. And I also used the slimline grassy hillside borders for the top edge of that grass panel. You could use the regular size one, I just don't have it. I also cut down another piece of white cardstock with that outside in stitch rectangle stackables so I could create an insert for the inside of my card. And I stamped the You Are Special and the mouse that's eating the strawberry in noble fur ink. And then I'm adding the word berry in lobster ink just for a bit of contrast. So now I'm ready to start assembling. I've created a card base out of some barn red cardstock. I scored and folded that to a standard A2 size card with a top fold. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. I glued the insert to the inside of the card and now I'm gluing that sky panel to the front of the card and then I'll add that grass pet portion right over top, just making sure everything is lined up nice and straight. Then I'll bring in my images and I'm gonna start at the top of my scene. So I'm gonna take that strawberry house and glue that down using the glue tube at the top left of that scene. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to tuck that little sign into the grass. Just making sure that that is clearly visible since that is the only sentiment on the front of the card. Then I'm gonna take my two little strips of strawberries and glue those down in front of the strawberry house. I'm gonna put them pretty close together because I want them to look like one big patch. So everything is kind of um, growing together in little rows there. And then right above that top line of strawberries, I want to have the mouse that is carrying some of those berries from the field into the house. Then I'm going to take the wagon and put that down in the center below the strawberry patch. I wanna give myself some room though so that I can fill that with the jam jars and not have them cover up too much of those vines. So I'm gonna put one on the left and then one on the right and I'm tipping them a little bit in either direction just to make them look a little bit more whimsical. Then I want the mouse that is in the overalls to be pulling the wagon, so I'll add him over on the left, just putting his hand up on the handle on the wagon so it looks like he's hanging on to that. And then the mouse that is eating the strawberry is gonna go on the right hand side to balance that out. I'm gonna take another additional jam jar and just add that down in front as if the mouse in the overalls is loading up the loot here. And then I'll add an extra strawberry down there just to kind of fill in that scene a little bit more. The last strawberry I'm gonna add up near the strawberry house. And then I have a tiny flower that I want to add to the top of the strawberry house just to add a little blossom. As a final embellishment, I wanted to add just a touch of glitter. So I'm using some stardust stickles to just fill in the centers of each of the flowers. So that'll just add a little extra sparkle and shine on this card, which really is more noticeable when you tip it into the light. There you can see all of that detail. And I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of these products, I'll have everything listed and linked down below for you. This card is also featured on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel today, so if you'd like to, you can check it out there. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much again for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.